Nvidia should be really worried about Big Navi at this point. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So if you've been following my channel, you'll know that for a little while now, I've been saying that I think AMD's actually holding back their fastest GPU, and they didn't actually show it during their Zen 3 event where they showed one of their big Navi GPUs, and I think their fastest GPU is actually going to be capable of competing with the RTX 3090, not the RTX 3080. And, you know, there's been a couple more pieces of information that have come out over the past couple of days that lend some credence to those ideas. So the first one comes from the YouTube channel Red Gaming Tech, where just earlier today he uploaded a video where he apparently contacted his sources in one of his sources who he seems to trust quite a bit told him that there's actually two more big Navi GPUs that they haven't shown off and the one that they're considering to be the Halo product is actually going to be competing with the RTX 3090 and you know to me that makes a whole lot of sense because during the Zen 3 event at the very end when they showed off a GPU that was when we you know take it and compare it to the RTX 3080 seems to be roughly 5.5% slower. I think that if I was AMD I would probably show off that card and keep one that's just a little bit faster waiting so that you kind of throw some people off and NVIDIA doesn't expect you to release it so that you maybe are able to get them out at a lower price before NVIDIA has a chance to potentially lower their prices or move in a super model to kind of debate you like they did last time with the RTX 2080 Super and 2070 Super where AMD thought they had a really competitive price but NVIDIA knew what was going to happen before they even released the card so NVIDIA then you know put out their super cards which were much better value than the cards they replaced and then all of a sudden AMD had to quickly respond by at the last second drop prices. So in order to avoid that situation once again, I believe the AMD is going to take their top end card as well as the actual prices of these cards and basically tell absolutely no one about them until the very last second. So they can go out on stage with a really, really powerful card and come in at a price that's actually very, very good. Probably, hopefully somewhere between, you know, $600 to $700 for their fastest card that will probably be able to beat the RTX 3080 and come really, really close to the RTX 3090 in terms of traditional rasterized gaming performance. And at that price point, it'll make a whole lot more sense because you're talking about a card that you know maybe it'll be worse in ray tracing but I believe Red Gaming Tech Source also said that he believes it's going to be quite a bit worse at ray tracing with which makes a lot of sense to me but if you're talking about a card that's as fast as an RTX 3090 coming in at a price of 600 to 700 dollars versus, you know, a $1,500 card. Well, I can tell you that at least in my position, that $600 to $700 card looks a whole lot more appetizing, especially considering that it's likely to have about 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And, you know, I'm not alone in thinking this is going to happen because not only are RGT's sources telling him that this is likely to happen, but on top of that, the YouTuber who goes by the name of Not An Apple Fan, who, if you're not subscribed to him or Red Gaming Tech, you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to both those guys. They make very similar content to me. And all my sources will be in the links in the description below. But need case not an apple fan also agrees with me and he believes that there's going to be another card waiting that amd has not shown off but there's one other piece of information that came out recently over the last couple of weeks that makes me believe that that's going to be the case and this next piece of information comes from the youtube channel pc world where during one of their podcasts one of their hosts brad charkas got on the phone with an amd representative it's one of the popular guys that you see on twitter i'm not entirely sure if it's scott herkelman or someone else but in any case apparently according to brad charkas he stressed that they weren't telling you which rx6000 series GPU that they were showing and you know if you watch the actual presentation of the Zen 3 event you know during the very end there where they showed off that Radeon GPU he's right they really did not tell you which GPU they were testing and again that leads me to believe that yes AMD is hiding something a little bit more powerful and I gotta say you know if AMD comes out with a card that's roughly as fast as an RTX 3090 it's got 16 gigabytes of VRAM it has the capability of doing some ray tracing they get their drivers under control because I know that the drivers with at at the launch of the Navi first generation GPUs really wasn't all that great for quite a long time. I think even upwards of like six months, people were reporting quite a few issues. So if they get that under control and they have some sort of response to DLSS, you know, on day one, it can't just be like, oh, we're working on something. You got to have something on day one. Well, then I think AMD this time around could have a really, really good GPU because you also got to remember that they're producing their GPUs on the TSMC 7 nanometer node, which is far more advanced than the Samsung 8 nanometer node that NVIDIA is producing their graphics cards on which means that you're probably going to be looking at a graphics card that draws a whole lot less power. And to me, that's actually a pretty big deal. I know for a lot of people that that doesn't matter a whole lot, but coming from someone who used to run SLI where you're drawing like 500 plus watts of power and you're dumping it into your room, when you close your door, trust me, it does not feel good. So when I look at these cards coming out from NVIDIA, they're 320 watts, 350 watts, and then when you overclock them, 
There's cards that can draw upwards of 480 watts. I believe the RTX 3090 Strix can drop to 480 watts if you choose to unlock it and overclock it that way. So it's again, it's not out of the box. It's your choice. But just thinking about dumping 480 watts into your room to get some decent overclocking out of the chip, you know, that just does not sound good to me. And, you know, I prefer to have my chips be as efficient as possible. And yes, I do like to, on my own, kind of push the limits towards more towards the edge and draw more power and stuff. That's all fun. But when you get these cards out of the box that they're already drawing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of watts of power and all that heat has to go somewhere so it's going to get dumped into your room, out of the box, that's not really the type of experience that I want. And I think there's probably also a lot of other people out there like me who would much prefer a far more efficient GPU you for a better price. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens when AMD officially announces these things on the 28th of October. We're not too far away now at this point. And if you can hold off from buying an RTX 3080, 3070, uh, well, I, I guess the 3070 is not coming out until a day after at this point. But if you, in any case, if you can hold off from buying anything right now, I personally would do that because we're probably only, you know, roughly about a month away from actually being able to purchase these cards. And I think you'd want to at least wait and see what AMD has to show off at this point, because even if they don't beat the RTX 3080, you could be surprised by the price point that they come in at and the feature set that they're actually going to implement with these cards. So again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that event. And I'm very, very excited to get one. I'll be trying my best to get my hands on one in any way I can. And I also will be streaming this event. So if you're not subscribed already, be sure to do so and also smack that bell icon so that you can go ahead and see all of my uploads when they come up and you get notified when my stream goes live because, you know, my streams are always very active and I think they're a whole lot of fun and I think you'd enjoy them. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about Big Navi? Do you think that they'll be able to compete with an RTX 3090 or do you think it'll fall short of the RTX 3080? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed.